Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 6. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. So this episode was the episode directed by Kyla Lee. People have been anticipating it obviously since last week's episode because this was the two-part episode and this was the conclusion. And I have to say these two episodes have definitely been the best of the season. And it's funny because they barely included any of our main cast members. Obviously Nia and Brainy were heavily featured in these episodes, but it was also heavy on Kara, Kenny and Alex, and also Kat Grant as well, and I really loved what we got during these episodes, like I totally think these are some of the best episodes we got as of like the last few years, so I really enjoyed it, I think Kyla did a great job and everyone brought their A game, especially Brainy and Nia, I think after these two episodes, I love them even more. So well done to Nicole and Jesse for that. Remember, just before you go into this video, I released my Flash review earlier today, I'm going to have a Flash trailer breakdown ASAP, that's coming very very soon. Also my Supergirl trailer breakdown for next week's episode is coming tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that, we have a lot to break down and talk about. However, for now, let's go ahead and start talking chronologically about what happened in episode 6 of Supergirl Season 6. Okay, so Kara, here's Brainy and Nia. They're in trouble at the start of the episode. That is where we left off with the cliffhanger with the Alien King, aka Naxxum Talk, who had captured Brainy and Nia. And so Kara hears it with her superheroing and she comes to the rescue and he's like a little bit stupid, obviously. It's kind of goofy the way that he's played the Alien, Naxxum Talk, that is. But I'm gonna say I really liked it, I thought it was very charming, I thought it was funny and it worked for what they were going for and I liked how it wasn't so serious with those guys because they are kind of silly, like I mean, like they're zookeepers from outer space, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue from this, so Kara gets hit and she does like one of their moves that Kenny and her have devised, it's like a speed racer move and so they're able to capture the aliens and you think, oh that's it, they're gone. But no, there is more to that, and if you remember the trailer, if you watched my trailer breakdown last week, you would know that there was more scenes with those guys, so they do come back. However, Kat Grant captures this on video, and this is her big thing, and it turns out Kat is more important than we initially thought to this. She isn't just someone that's following them around, however, she is maybe the reason why Kara will not escape the Phantom Zone in the future. Okay, so Brainy is very thankful for Kenny, they say their goodbyes, Kara is thankful for Brendan, and also Brenda as well, and Kenny and Kara, they prepare for the prom at this point as Brainy and Nia leave the scene. Then you have Nia, who sees, again in her dreams, the cage, but this time the cage is empty, so you're like, something is going on here. Where is the cougar from last episode, the pink animal is completely gone, so why is Nia seeing this? Because we know Nia's dreams are really important, and I mean, it's like the whole reason why they ended up back in 2009 in Midvale, because of her dreams. And so, let's move on from this. Alex is proud of Kara and Kenny's superhering, and this is obviously against what we saw last episode, as she was very against it. However, she's seen what she's been able to do over the last couple of days, and so she reveals this to Kara in the car before they go into the prom. And so Alex explains how she was worried, but then she realized that she was wrong all along. And I mean, this pretty much tracks with how Kara and Alex and their relationship is in the future. I mean, like, Alex always admires Kara's powers. However, she isn't like fully committed to her exposing herself to the world because she feels still like she has this kind of responsibility because she is her younger sister after all, which is natural. So the reason we've come back to the past, the kryptonite meteorite is on its way and you see the meteor shower raining from the sky. So at this point, Kara goes into the prom, she meets Kenny, Alex goes to try and take photos of the meteorite and also at the same time you have Nia and Brainy who have their prom moment on the Legion ship, they're all dressed up and everything. It's a very sweet moment. And so, Kara and Kenny, I must say, this episode and last episode, they really set them up, and they did such a great job, the chemistry is there, and I'm very surprised they actually haven't like brought him into the present day after all this focus on him and them together, because there is a lot of focus. Arguably, the episodes have been more about like Kara and Kenny, 
than Kara and Alex, even though Alex has been a huge presence, obviously, and she plays such an important part in these episodes. However, Kara and Kenny has been like the main focus, I would say. So Kara reveals she loves Kenny and she's excited to start their new life here, but then she's cut off once again and she can't get to that line that she's trying to say about National City University, but that comes back later and we'll go over that in just a second. So Kara sees the kryptonite meteor heading for school, she realizes, oh I gotta go be a superhero again and stop the meteorite from hitting the school, but then she is infected with the kryptonite because she's never seen it before and she is kind of oblivious to this, and so she's been hit by it, she lands inside the high school gym, and Brainy and Nia are like, this wasn't supposed to happen this way, so again, timeline changes occur, and Kara crashes through the gym, and she's got her veins full of green kryptonite and this is like the first time she's been infected and that's why they're there to try and get the DNA off of her. Just right after this, Kenny sacrifices himself for Kara after the aliens escape and so they're up in the air, you have like the floating head hologram of Naxxum Talk and Kenny pretends to be a Kryptonian, he's zapped up to the ship, they realize he faked it and now they're after Kara again like the real Kryptonian because they're able to scan and realize that Kenny is just a human and so it turns out it was Kat Grant who let the aliens escape because she stumbles upon the ship, she takes down the shield and they're able to get out and she is captured in the same cell as Kenny and they have this really nice moment together and Cat Grant makes Kenny realize his worth because he's been doubting himself and like his inability to take down aliens and like fight them unlike Kara obviously because he doesn't have superpowers he is a normal human and he looks down upon himself but then Cat takes none of this and it was a really great moment. So in the prom you have this teacher singing in the hallway it's very funny it also must be mentioned that we didn't like get a proper prom scene Obviously, that's probably because of COVID restrictions. I reckon in a normal year, we probably would have gotten that big prom scene with Kenny and Kara in there dancing together. However, they were fully dressed up. They're in the school. You have, like, segments of the prom, and it was cool segments. So I'm not annoyed by that, but I just thought I wanted to point that out in the video. And so Brainy tries to comfort Nia, as Nia did to Brainy last episode by singing 9 to 5, but it doesn't work and Nia is, you know, really frustrated about how the aliens have escaped and like she wasn't able to interpret her dreams again. But then they get back to the mission and Brainy and Nia knock out Kara with like some sort of device they have and they go after the ship themselves and Cat Grant has that talk with Kenny and then Kara speeds off after Alex has this really nice moment with Kara and she uses like a hairpin to open the door so Kara can get out and Kara is imbued with like the solar radiation of the earth. It wasn't actually the sun, it was the moon so that was an interesting kind of twist that I wasn't expecting. However, it does make sense because it's earth's atmosphere and you know the sun isn't fully down and you know the reflection of the sun on the moon is kind of what gives the night its light so it does make sense that Kara has her powers once again and she is pretty much up to speed and she speeds off after the ship trying to get Nax and talk and Nia at the same time is able to stop the cougar in her dreams and she sees a clue and it says PW which stands out to be Perry White and it's all a big realization for Nia as she is able to conjure the cougar from her dream into reality and it chases after the aliens and you're like what the hell just happened here? Obviously this is like a big upgrade of her powers and she realizes at this point that Kat Grant was the pink cougar all this time. I guess the cougar just like was the embodiment of like a cat and it was just like symbolic for cat and you see the logo at the end of the episode where she is drawing the Catco logo and there's like a kind of cougar next to it so I guess that's the whole idea behind that and so Nia gets this revelation and they accidentally let loose some of the captured aliens but we don't see those captured aliens so I guess they're able to contain it but Cat Grant is outside of the ship and she is ready to expose Kara, the police are surrounding them and she flies away, breaks out of the handcuffs, and you're like, what the hell just happened? Did Kara just expose her identity as an alien to the world? Well, it looks like that. However, this comes with a twist because Brainy and Nia talk about time traveling again, and they do time travel again right after this, but Kara hears it, and so does she, and that is why she flies off. Rather than escaping, she time travels. She goes so fast that Supergirl 
time travels, and this has been seen before in the comics, and I don't believe it's happened in the TV show as of right now. However, Superman and Supergirl are sometimes able to go around the globe so fast that they're able to time travel. So, similar to the Flash, I guess, but, you know, it's a bit easier for the Flash. And so, by going back and time traveling, their main goal is to stop Cat from actually getting the footage. So, Nia stops the drone, she shoots it down with her finger pistol, which I thought was very funny. And she's able to talk to Cat and also gives Cat Grant her name. So, her origin was rooted from Nia and her very small conversation with her in the past in 2009. So, I thought that was a great twist because CJ was the name given to her by Perry White and that was the symbolic cage that she has been locked in this whole time. And by the end of the episode, Cat quits and she is out of that cage, she is out of Perry's cage, she isn't owned by him anymore and she is off to do her own thing and so I thought that was like a very fitting moment. I really liked Eliza as Cat. I thought she did a pretty good job in embodying Callista Flockhart. And this origin does make a lot of sense because we know she had a history with Lois Lane, with Perry White at the Daily Planet, but then she somehow at some point went off and created her own media organization, which turned out to be Catco. And I thought this was like a really great way to kind of sell that and introduce that idea of her origin. So I really liked having Cat Grant in these couple of episodes. Anyway, let's continue on from this. So Kara reveals that she can't actually stay in Midvale and she can't stay around to be super with Kenny and she chooses National City over Kenny and over Midvale. And so this is the conversation that they've been trying to have for these past two episodes. And Kenny reveals how Kara changed his life completely after his dad died and everything by doing these things with Kara. He found himself to be special or have some purpose. And he talks about Kara as this ball of light and he's better for it. And he wants to figure himself out, but he reveals at this point that he can't go to National City. He has to stick around and find himself. So even though they won't be together, pretty much Kara and Kenny are on the same page. And I thought it was a very fitting way to go out the episode. Obviously, they were great together. And maybe like me personally was hoping for him to return in the future. Because the scenes they had together was so great. And I'm so glad that Kenny was spotlighted so much because we never had him this spotlighted before like he had like one small appearance where he got killed in a past episode but now we actually get to care for a new character and a character who's only going to be in like two episodes that's it but they're on the same page and it is a fitting way to go out and we were kind of expecting this to happen because we know Kenny isn't really a part of Kara's life in the future maybe they have some sort of correspondence that we don't know about I mean it's a kind of sad way to end but it was expected and right at the end of the episode, Brainy and Nia return to the Legion ship and they time travel back to the future. And they are feeling very hopeful that they can save Kara, they have Kara's DNA, and they're going to set off one of the Phantoms into the Phantom Zone to try and track Kara down and they're going to probably go in next episode and do that. Next episode is directed by David Harewood, it's titled Fear Not. I'm going to have my trailer breakdown out for that tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that and we're going to fully go into what is happening we know there is some more alien ship stuff and we know that Kara is probably going to return at the end of next episode so that is next week Melissa's returning to team Supergirl with the rest of the cast super excited for that also remember next week is the last episode it's technically the mid-season finale and then Supergirl is going to go away for 10 weeks it's going to return in August after Superman and Lois finishes airing its whole season and they're going to come back with their final 13 episodes and Supergirl isn't going to end until late November. So lots more Supergirl content, obviously we're going to continue making videos over the break and we're going to go back to Superman Lois reviews as per usual like we did before Supergirl came on. So if you don't want to miss out on any of my daily DC TV content to do with The Flash, Supergirl or Superman Lois, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, that helps and supports the channel but mainly subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of those videos. Go check out my recent videos, you can click here for one of them. But for now, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.
icy room.